This video is the first 150 metre section of our 10 acre cow paddock and we're going to show you the prep, the gear and a whole lot of detail on how we're going to accomplish this. Hi, I'm Corey from Rockpile. My wife Amanda and I live 100% off grid on 100 acres in the Wheatbelt region of WA. Because this was vacant land when we bought it, we have to build everything from scratch. That includes all of our internal fencing that we want to do for our cows. This is kind of the start of the, the 10 acre lot fencing video, I guess. Now I kind of got a bit of a plan. I need to get the excavator. And basically the idea is I'm going to weld a tow ball onto the blade so I can hook the trailer up to the excavator and it can basically follow me around and we'll chuck all the fencing stuff on there because it's going to be on there for a little while because things take a little while to happen around here rather than chuck it all on my ute and then you know if we need to go somewhere I've got to unload it all off the ute. So first job is to weld the tow ball on, come back down here, unload the stuff, the implements out of the trailer, chuck them in the implement pile over there and then uh, we'll start loading up with relevant fencing stuff. I did measure it, I measured it off Google so you know it could be right. Uh, I think it was about 900 meters that we got to do so it's our biggest fencing project yet on rock pile. <laughs> uh, let's get the digger to the shed and find a tow ball. The reason why I'm loading everything up like this is because if I get the excavator 500 metres down the road, down the driveway, and I've got to come back to get something, it's just like a pain in the ass, you know? Like, because it goes so slow and everything's so heavy, there's no real other way to move stuff apart from with a digger. The trailer's on, uh, i just got a bucket, 300 bucket, and my uh, Corey Special homemade rake for the excavator. These are all 16 mil hard ox tines. This is a bit of 220 mil diameter pipe that has a 20 mil wall thickness. And then just some, you know, a bit of welding, a few brackets. Built that before we even came here. So now I need to go find, because I want actually, I might put the, get the 600 mil bucket instead of this one. I'll jump in the ute and I'll go grab all the random fencing stuff. Star pickets and wire and just random stuff and load this trailer up and get ready to hit the road, Jack. After many trips back and forth, we have a trailer with stuff on it. Got fencing tools, picket remover, 600mm bucket, rake, what star pickets I had, and what fencing job wouldn't be complete without the, uh, the fencing bar, roller barbed wire, roller high tensile, single strand use what's left on that one and then chuck a new one on and i got some steel posts over there i only got three because that's all they had in stock so hopefully get some more tomorrow anything left to do is to uh get the water tank on there we're loaded up and we're heading <laughs> i'll just call it heading to work for the day <laughs> as you can see Got a bit of stuff on a little trailer idea. I'll soon find out if I'm not organised enough, because you know, I would have forgotten at least five things. So, just looking for my first post, where it's gonna go. So, drill the hole down to about, um, approximately 600 mil deep. The posts are going in the ground 900 mil. So that last 300, I'll use the post rammer to bash them in that last little bit. So I drill the hole, loosen up the dirt, put a bag of just general purpose pre-mixed concrete, not the fast setting stuff, just, you know, everyday concrete. 
with a bit of additives like whatever it's got in it, a bit of sand and some aggregate. Mix that in with the dirt in the hole, use the auger to mix it in. And then I get the post and I have a mark on the post at uh, 1250 down from the top. And put it, push it through the, the wet slurry mix and then use the pounder to bang it in the rest of the way. If I can't get it down that all that way, that's fine. I can lop the top off later. And for those with a keen eye that have picked it up already, drop it in the comments if you think it, you know what it is. It's my uh, second day without a boot on my leg. I did it yesterday, tried it first time in, in two sneakers. So I'll just go with it. I'm still a little bit unstable on the unlevel ground, but I'm being careful. So you can see I got, you know, shoes on. So I got some Hocker Bondi's, pretty comfy, feel pretty good. But um, I need to get the, the physio said I need not so much to rely on the boot all the time. So I thought, let's just chuck some sneakers on and give it a go. Push it in. So that marks 1250 down from the top. Um, so when I'm banging the post in, I know not to go past it, and then they'll all end up the same. And like I said, if, it, if I can't get it down all the way because I hit a rock or it's too hard or something, I'll just lop the top off with the recipo saw. Boom. A little bit of morning exercise too, you know, like a bit of this, a bit of this. So we're not too bad, not too bad. So the fence is going to run around the outside of this post, right? It's going to come down here and then along that way. So I want this post just to be leaning out just a smidge so when I pull it tight it'll uh, pull back in and remember also we do have other posts steel posts uh, coming off on a angle that go down to the ground and they get tied back into this post you may have seen that system I'm kind of doing my own little take on it because it just works out cheaper because I can make the stuff here true rock pole fashion. All right, so this is why I brought the trailer with the stuff on it. As you can see, I've got an excavator bucket and I've got the rake that goes on the excavator. So if you look out here, I've got to like move those rocks down there. I've got to get them out of the way, take that tree out, um, move these branches and stuff and just give the ground a bit of a clear uh, path because the fence kind of goes a bit more down that way. Let's, uh, I'm going to go drill that other hole and do that and then I'll probably come back here and take the auger off and put the bucket on and move this stuff and clear this uh, debris. Let's go. I got the third post in. You probably can't see that but it's sort of down there somewhere. And I chucked the rake on and we cleared a bit of a path down through here. Took that tree, took that tree out, moved a few rocks over there. Oh, dropped a radio on the ground. Lucky it's pretty tough, but because it just keeps on rocking out. I've just called the steel joint. They've got some more steel in. I'm going to go get that. Going to go get some hay while I'm up there because their buildings are next door to each other. So we'll go one, two, three, probably another four posts will get us down to that you'll see when i get down there it's like the main track that runs along the fence line uh, that's what we're going to go parallel with but this little dog leg here just to go sort of down our driveway and there's a bit of a twist and a bend and a drop and yeah, it's just all over the place so once we get that bit done we'll be kind of on a good straight stretch just got to uh just got to deal with the rocks then that last post i drilled um took four goes because i kept hitting rocks all right, let's go. Just let's just go get stuff, and I'll catch up with you when I get back. So 
in preparation for our next task, um, I've run this line out on the bottom. This is just the high tensile fencing wire that we're going to be using for all the strands. Um, put a temporary picket in as an anchor and we'll just use these chain strainers and we'll just um, lock that on there and we'll get we'll pull this wire tight that should probably be enough and now I'll just go give it a flick to make sure it's not bound up on the ground So now we've got a straight line between this post, that post, and the corner we're coming off, and that's so we can put our pickets in a straight line. Uh, now the design I'm doing is I need a star picket three meters from the post for the first picket, and that'll be the brace for the diagonal that we're making, rock pile style. And then we'll measure in between with the little measuring wheel, and we'll just divide that into approximately four meter spacings. So I've just got our trusty measuring wheel, works in metres, and then you just reset it. So I'm just going to measure between those three metre marks and then we'll divide that into approximately four metre sections. Now I'm going to put the, uh, the back of the picket, so this side here goes on the line, so this side actually goes on the pressure side of the fence and the wires will run through that. And you've got to exercise your left arm as well, by the way. The right to the timber post. 26.9. Uh, so we've got 26.9 metres, so 26.9 divided by 6 spacings is 4.48 metres, so you know, this much under 4.5 metres. Worked out well. Hello. Our next job is load you up with these. Got our dummy marker. Not because she's a dummy, she's a wonderful lady. She like, did someone lick the camera? Oh, is it There's camera? like a big goober on it. <laughs> this is a dummy marker. <laughs> okay, so I've just got top, so we just hold it level with the top. And as you can see, uh, I've written bar, oh, I didn't write barb up there, but that's okay. That's barb at the top. Hot wire, earth, hot, earth. And then we've got these things. These are just plastic star picket insulators. And all you do is you break one of them off. You push this over the picket and jam that little locking thing in and it locks it to it. And then your hot wire goes in here and you break that off and push through there and that holds the hot wire in. So there's no up or down. They're just whichever way and just line it up with the hole and push it in and then the hot wire will sit in there and then you snap that one off and put that through these are the insulators we've chosen just Gallagher star picket insulators um, keep in mind there is two types um, depending on your star picket some have a different size hole apparently which I didn't even know about anyway I got these ones because I made sure they fitted in the shop All right. Cut it short. Yesterday was, was day two. Was that? Oh, yesterday was day two. Today's day three. Uh, we cut it short yesterday because we got our pigs back from the butcher guy. Wow. <laughs> Just, um, what do we end up with? About 114 kilos of meat. So there'll be a video on that one coming of what we got and how we sort of divvied it all up and whatnot. So stay tuned for that one. Let's talk about Jenny's. This is a spinning jenny. 
So you basically just chuck your 1500 meter roll of wire on and you chuck it on, you use these, these things, you can adjust in and out to sort of centralize the wire on the, on the spinning bit. And you just tighten them up like that. And uh, basically as I walk off with the wire, um, it'll just unroll nicely and not get tangled up. So it doesn't take any effort. You just, just pull it. I just feed it through the picket here. Uh, make sure I'm in the right hole, which I'm not. Another thing too, I should say, because we're all about safety at Rockpile, is you should put some glasses on. Because uh, the wire can get quite flingy if you're not in control of the end and you don't want the wire coming in there. And I'm just going around these for now because later uh, I'll bring some insulators off the inside here. But I just want to put them around there because it's not all loose and hanging in the breeze. This is the, the earth, we're just going to tie it off to the fence. <laughs> Sorry, I get sidetracked very easily. Hello. Here you come slobber your, again. Yeah, goobers on the camera again. Yep. So I'm going to try and explain how to do an end knot. That's the most common knot in fencing. There's a lot of videos on it. This isn't really going to be an exact how-to video, but I'll do my best. So, I know the height I want it on the post, which is approximately here. Okay, so we're just going to bring this wire around the post. Pretty simple, like that. Now I like to allow from the end, probably about 400 mil come in. So that's probably about there, right? And I'll do a bend. So we just do a bend like that. I'll just bring this out a bit more. Okay, so you can see we've gone around the post and I've put a bend in it. Now, I grab this loose tail I go under, under the wire that's going back down the fence and then I go over the wire that has, that I'm holding in my hand here. That's looped around the... That's looped around the post. Then I kind of push it all back a bit. I pull this up tight like that, right? So it looks like that. I grab this, we'll call this one the tail. I go under the long length that goes back, under, like that. Hopefully, you're with me. Now, I come in about 100 mil, I put a bend, like that, and this is my little handle, okay? Now I'll pull this up tight, like this, all right? And I give this wire that's going back to the fence just a little, a little kink, like that. Now I grab the handle and we basically wind it around. And I like to go around about six times. So that's four, five, six. And we've got a knot. Now we grab this, the tail, we turn it. 90 degrees and we give it a little kind of like a little crank doesn't really matter which way you go it may take one this way and one back right but it will uh snap off and that way you're left with that and there's no sharp look i can rub my hand on that no problem no sharp edges at all the actual little bit here is not there's no sharpness and then you're left with your off cut and that just goes in the in the bucket that you should keep on hand to put all your offcuts in so they don't end up in uh, Miss Moo's little feet. And I do those knots, that's pretty much 99.9% .9 of the knots that I do. Voila, let's go. All right, so we're just uh, running the wire through the insulator. Manda's pulling it out. And I'm just coming through behind her and clicking it in. So that's how that works. So this will be the hot wire and this will be the earth wire. 
Uh, let's run some barb. 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 Jeez, we've got um, we got Jenny. 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 Barb. Amanda. Corey. Summer. I got, I got all the chicks today. Barb's a real prick, but. So when you finish with your wire on the Jenny, just roll it up, right? And what I do is I always stick the middle in there. All right, and that way I know, because see how we're getting towards the end? So we've got the end of the wire here, but I always stick the one I use in the middle. So next time we know where to start from. Barb wire is nasty to work with. She's just bad. So I'm just gonna take a few of these barbs off the first part so I can hold onto it easier. And when I get to the other end, I can just tie the knot a bit easier. I know there's a tool that you can wrap around barb wire to get the barbs off. Um, if anyone wants to send us that tool, please feel free. So I just use the pliers and we just unravel, basically hold onto it like that. So I've got the two bits of barb off. Where's your bucket? Oh, a bucket's behind you. We've got this little thing that I made to hold the barbed wire. Now, obviously, before anyone says, this should be in the center because it's obviously very top heavy. I actually made it to go on the old Hilux. Remember that tipper Hilux? There was a certain place on the tray that this actually clamped onto and it worked a treat, but I haven't got around to making another little cable drum yet. So we'll just use this one. So Amanda's gonna stand on here, all right? with the leather glove and once we get these few ravels undone because it's a bit messy um, it'll start unrolling pretty easy. Oh, you found a right hand glove. I did. Where'd you find the right glove? I just found it. Ah. I normally just have lefties for welding just like left gloves but she found a right one. Nice. All right stand on that. Don't let go. Yep good. Now I don't really do end knots on barbed wire. I just basically put it around and use this thing, which I think is called a twitcher. Um, if you know the actual proper name for it, can you give us a comment? It just has different size holes in it to put wire through. So it just goes through the wire and basically you just kind of saves your fingers, you know, trying to bend it around. Cause this is barbed wire is pretty stiff in short bits. We'll go around there. So see how that's giving me the um, bit of leverage? Because if I was trying to do that with my fingers, my fingers would be uh, copping it. So it just pulls it nice and tight, as you can see, as we're twisting it around here. I don't know how many times you want to go around, just whatever you're comfortable with at the time. We'll just go there, boom. Thanks, Barb. And they, these get a wire that twitches around the barb and goes through this hole here to hold it hold it down and that happens on every every post all right so we're just going to take the wire off oh geez, who did them up take this off here uh, this wire is not long enough to do the next bit that we want to do a bit of tape around there so i know that that's the end and then when i go to reuse it i know that the one with the tape on it is where i can unroll it nicely Okay, so we've got a new roll here, uh, just Waratah brand, high tensile wire, 2.5mm, uh, 1500 meter roll. I don't know what that is in uh, bananas, but it's a few. Now these guys put a gripple on the bit that we're going to start with, so we know where to start it to unroll, otherwise you'll just end up with a mess. So 57 kilos it says, come on, come on lifter. We just kind of visually center it up, push them out to the side, and these just clamp off to hold it in, in the center. All right, and that's why I did them up so tight last time. So hopefully, that better be the end. 
Hang on, we gotta find the. Look, look, look. That's it. Ah, oh, lovely. Lucky I'm here. Jeez, I was having a bloody heart attack for a second there, going, I've done all this work trying to set this thing up and we've put it in upside down back to front, Miss Jane. Alright. <laughs> That was meant to be like a stylish, like throw and just land on the beautifully. <laughs> As you can see, we're ready to um, start again with the Jenny. Um, yeah, just take a bit. We'll just go to that post. I'll come down with the uh, with the picket and the driver. One-handed, see. Alright, <laughs> right, up on top baby, start it, up you go. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we're at the final little stretch now where I use uh, things called gripples, you've seen them before, little gripples. And they just slide over the wire and you use this tool to tighten them up, grip the tool. Yes, I could strain it with the chain, but lazy. We just get our wire from going that way, pull it a bit tight. Cut it off to rough length. Get our wire going that way. Get the gripple. Slide it on. Our wires pulled tight just by hand, and now I'll just go for a walk up and down the fence just to make sure that they're not uh, twisted or hooked up on anything before I give them the final uh, hulk. Uh, everything looks good. Oh, windy. So windy. Okay, so we're just going to leave it at that and then I'm going to head inside. If you like this video, please subscribe, like, share, and thank you for joining me. I'm about to get really wet. <laughs> See you on the next one.